Welcome to episode 94 of the Daniel Yours podcast with today's guest, Taylor Morgan. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Joined here today by Captain Taylor Morgan. Taylor, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate your time. Daniel, thank you for having me. You were with Gary V recently, which is super cool for those who know. And I want to get into about you and who you are and your story, but talk to me about that experience because that was quite recent, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was uh, just over a week ago. That was a great experience. That was my second interview with him. Uh, I've had him on my podcast twice now, and I was able to do that through his NFT series, V Friends. So when that first came out, uh, because I trust so much in Gary, because I see a lot of myself in him and just the way that he talked about uh, V Friends, he would say things like, I would rather go to zero dollars in my bank account than have this project fail. And I feel the exact same way about my brand. Not that I'm anywhere near close to Gary V status, but that there's just no way that my brand is going to fail. So I, I trusted in him hundred percent. And, um, I saw the podcast Panther V friend, which part of what comes along with that is two interviews with him, 45 minute interviews to, to come on your podcast. And because I had a podcast for about two years at that point, I was like, absolutely. I'm serious about this. So I know that's a decision I needed to make. Uh, you'd think it'd be a no brainer, but for me at the time, um, the investment started at, I want to say around like 50 K worth of Ethereum. And about a month prior, I had just pulled out all of my savings from my investment accounts because they were invested in companies that I don't support anymore. They were invested in like pharmaceutical companies and Pepsi, like these huge corporations that I now despise, right? So I took all my money out of there because I didn't want to be supporting them any longer, even though I was making good money from them. I didn't care because it was supporting companies that I don't support. And I was wondering what I could put the money into. I saw Friends drop. I was like, oh, this is it. Uh, but at the time, the podcast Panther would have been about, it would have been almost the the entire savings. Uh, thankfully, he did what's called a Dutch auction. So as time went on, the price decreased. And I thought they were going to sell out instantly. I thought other, you know, bigger podcasters would see this and, you know, they'd snag it up. To my surprise, I was able to get it at the floor, which came out to uh, around like $35,000 uh, worth of Ethereum. So I was able to snag that one, which I was stoked about. And then I also got a gift goat and a very rare like a sponge. And if you're not familiar with friends, this is all going to be mumbo jumbo to you. But uh, yeah, that's how I was able to meet him in his office. And that's uh, pretty crazy. Podcast. That's pretty crazy. It's one of these, like in this era of influencer marketing, it's almost like some people who get big enough can sell anything, right? Like anything that Kim Kardashian sells is going to be number one bestseller, you know, blah, blah. Whether you agree or disagree with that is like irrelevant to the fact that that's just how it works. And like Gary's like probably almost in that realm where he's got enough money and enough support behind him where it's like, yeah, when he says like, I'm putting my full support behind my V friends, but I'm, I'm all in on the NFT community. Like the only way that I think that his V friends uh, uh, product kind of fails is if like NFTs as a whole, like the entire thing fails, not just Gary. So, but, but you know, to put, to put, your money where your mouth is and like taking action and standing up for yourself and like, you know, not, not to take your own words, but like being the captain of your own ship and like, okay, I'm going to do this and it's a heavy price, but like, let's go. It's, it's a pretty big testament to, to who you are as a person, I think. Yeah. And, and I made a post about this, uh, after our interview together, why I was able to make that decision. Uh, and it's because I knew myself, right? So a lot of people, they, when faced with a big investment or a big purchase, a lot of them don't even see it as an investment. They're like, oh, that's too expensive, right? I can't afford that. I think that's all bullshit, right? We can afford whatever we want. Same thing with time. If you say you don't have time, that's all bullshit. It's just an excuse, right? So if you actually want something, you will do whatever it takes to get that thing. So I like to say that I have a near unlimited personal development budget. 
because I understand that the best ROI you could possibly get is with investing in yourself. So I knew that by investing in VFriend, specifically the podcast Panther, where I would get to interview him, that's a huge investment in myself and my brand. Also, I trust in Gary and the whole VFriends community. I've got to hang out with a lot of them in person at a lot of these different events, and it's just an amazing group of people. So investing in myself and investing in a community was just a no-brainer to me. It, it almost didn't matter the cost because I knew the value. So this is, I recorded a podcast on this um, about two years ago. The formula that I came up with on whether or not you should make an investment or not. So first off, you have to know your end goal. Uh, I like to call it your MVVP, which there's a lot that can go into this, but it's your mission, vision, values, and purpose. Because once you've defined that, essentially the things you want to accomplish, the legacy you want to leave, who you want to be remembered as, all these things, and you have these goals set in place, once you've determined that, then you can determine all of the roadblocks that are stopping you or slowing you down from achieving this end goal. And then when you're presented with a product or service that brings you closer to your end goal by getting you over the roadblocks or one step further, whatever, instead of looking at the price, the monetary price of the product or service, think about how it will feel to have that problem solved, right? What is that worth to you? What is, what is this problem being solved worth to you? What is the value of that, right? So instead of the, the monetary cost, we should be focused on value and not just immediate short-term value, which is what most people are so set on. It's like, what am I going to get out of this instantaneously? I'm running a marathon. Right? I, I'm literally seven steps in to my lifelong marathon. So I don't care if I get an immediate return on investment. By the way, I could have sold all my V friends for like 10x what I purchased them for. I've, I've had offers for like 10x what I paid for it. And it's like, no, because I'm not going for this short-term value. I'm going for lifetime value. Right. The, the relationships that you're going to make through meeting other people in the community, through meeting Gary directly and all of the, you know, the trickle down effects that come with that are going to far out, uh, far exceed the 10 X that you'll get today, because that might turn into like a hundred X in 10 years or, or even more, right? If there's no real uh, ceiling to that. Of course, there will be a time in your life where it does make sense to sell that for, for money and then do something else with that money. And you know, the, the answer wouldn't be, okay, I can sell this and I can go like buy a boat like that. I mean, maybe, but, but that's probably right. not the best use of it, right? It's got to, could still contribute to your values and all the things that you want to, to continue to do. Yeah. And, and this is just me personally, you know, um, like I have a friend who became a millionaire off of V friends. He bought a shit ton at the beginning and then flipped them all and became a millionaire, which, you know, is great for him. And now he's, he's doing something else. So it's not like one is good and one is bad, but for me, I'm going for lifetime value. Nothing against people who buy things to flip them. That's totally okay. As long as you know why you're doing it and the purpose behind it. So I imagine that, and this could change, but I imagine that I'm going to keep at least the podcast Panther NFT for the rest of my life because think of legacy, right? Like this is... Gary says that this is his 45 plus year project. Like this is going to continue even after he dies. He's, he's creating everything. He's got stuffed animals. He's creating shows. He's, he's created card games. Like he's partnered with companies for clothing and, and wine. Like he's going to be everywhere. So if I can start building my legacy for my children, if I ever have them, that's a cool thing to pass down. You know, so it doesn't have to be, we don't always have to think of uh, investing in something with any sort of return, right? I, I think this is a, it is an Alex Hormozzi quote. I'm going to butcher it, but he says that if you can wait your entire lifetime to get any sort of gratification or recognition for your work, if you can go your entire life without receiving any of that, then you can change the world. He mm -hmm. said that in a, a podcast interview with Tom Bilyeu. He said, if you can wait a year, you'll be in like the top 1% of earners. If you can wait like 10 years 
for any sort of gratification or recognition, then you'll be in like the top 0.1% earners. If you can wait a lifetime, that's a lasting legacy. And this is such a, not that I'm waiting, not that I'm waiting a lifetime. Clearly I'm getting (laughs) some gratification and, you know, Sure. I think, I think, I mean, we've got to enjoy things and everyone's path is different, right? Like your friend who became a millionaire off of, uh, of the V friends. I would be surprised if you told me that that friend is just like, you know, partying and vacationing and just like kind of fucking off with their money. It's like, if you make a quick, like this is sounds so silly, but if you make a quick couple million and then you, you make, you use that money to then start some big business that that was your real goal. You just needed that upfront cash to start whatever you need to start buy a building, buy equipment, buy products, whatever, then it's like, okay, then that trade-off is worth it because you couldn't get the the loans from from family or from the bank or from whoever. You couldn't scrounge up the money doing whatever else you were doing. So you found some way, and you know, there's obviously an element of luck in that as well, but found some way to to make a bunch of money and then take out the cash from that, but then use that cash for something else. If you're just using that cash to go and party and whatever, I mean again, like to each their own. Do do whatever you want with your life. Who are we to tell you what to do? But that's probably not the best advice and probably not the advice that the advice that someone would give to like their best friend type of thing. Right. And and again, like with fitness, th- this this whole like delaying gratification thing is is everything, right? If you go to the gym today, you get nothing out of it. I mean, you feel good, you'll get a little bit of a pump, you feel, you know, it's cool, but can you wait the long game? Can you play the long game? Like consistency is the most important thing in, in all of fitness. And I think that's what it always comes back to. And this world of just, you know, instant gratification is a, it's a tough one to, to, to get out of. Uh, but if you can wrap your head around that, then that's obviously a big, a big step. Like the quote that from, uh, from Alex Ramosi that you were talking about, how did you come to realize these things? Or was this something that you kind of always had in the back of your mind was there a lesson that you learned somewhere along the way that that got you into this mindset or how did it come up to what mindset specifically delaying gratification yeah yeah this is an ongoing process right it's a constant battle i'm i'm reading the war of art yes the Mm -hmm. the war of art by stephen pressfield in there he talks about resistance and everybody faces resistance and this is essentially delaying gratification they're very similar things what most people do myself a lot of times included is we take the instant gratification right we say um uh like for for me a lot of times it's procrastinating work even though i'm doing what i love i know that it's going to be hard work and it's boring and so i procrastinate it and there's that resistance And there's this voice in my head that rationalizes with myself like, oh, you can do it tomorrow or it's not a good time to do it now because dot, dot, dot. And the sinister thing is a lot of these rationalizations that we come to are legitimate reasons. And because they're legitimate reasons, we believe them. And because we believe them, we continue to procrastinate and put things off and then they just never get done. So most people spend their entire lives in this kind of um, you know, teeter totter between wanting to make the decision and then rationalizing with themselves on why they shouldn't. Right. So it's, it's really overcoming that internal battle with resistance. And how do you do that? Uh, a a few different ways. One, you have to be fed up with an average mediocre life, like whatever it is that you're striving for, you have to, you have to look at yourself and say, is this really all that I'm capable of? Am I operating at my full potential? Most people, most guys that I talk with, they want to strive for excellence, right? Most guys know that they are settling for average, that they're not 100% fulfilled in their physical health, their relationship, their work, whatever it is. They know they're not fulfilled the longer we talk, the the more that I can help them understand that they have been settling for average. So once they realize that, that there is something more, then they have to define what that something more is going back to the MVVP. This is the whole first month of my program is defining your MVVP. And this is why I believe I get better results than a lot of other, you know, wellness courses out there is because the most important thing is beginning with the end in mind. As Stephen Covey says, your mission, vision, values, and purpose knowing 
what your purpose is, knowing the man you want to become, the legacy you want to leave, all these things. And so then instead of looking out at the sea of uncertainty with fear, not knowing where it is that you're going, you have this North star or compass, which is your MVVP. And once you can see that, however far in the distance it may be, it gives you something to reach for. So what happens with most people, if they come to the realization that they're settling, is that they look out and say, okay, uh, it's just this sea of uncertainty with sea monsters and um, you know who knows what's going to happen out there. There's lots of storms and it's a scary place, right? So they look out there and like, fuck that, I'm going to stay here. And they they settle for the certainty of misery as opposed to the misery of uncertainty. Because uncertainty can be a scary place. It absolutely is a scary place. And so they'd rather settle for the certainty of misery because they know they're not happy. So how do we take that leap? One, defining what that is. So you have something to constantly go towards. Even when you stray off course, you're like, oh, I remember why I'm doing this. And then also having people to hold you accountable. I think I know is an absolute must. No man is an island, right? We can't do these things on our own. If you decide to make a change, whether this is a lifestyle change, you know, you want to start going to the gym, eating healthier, quit drinking, whatever it is, if you do not change your environment and the people you surround yourself with, it is going to be impossible to make that change, right? Even the most, I shouldn't say impossible, highly unlikely that you're going to make that change. You would have to be the most mentally tough person in the entire world to essentially be ostracized from your group and still do these things. So for me, um, when I quit drinking for two years after I broke my ankle while drunk, I was still in the same environment. I was still in the Marine Corps. I was still hanging around the same people who I thought were my friends. And then when, when we would go out to bars or parties, cause I would still go out, I just wouldn't drink. They would try to get me to drink. And it's like, if you were actually my friend and they know why I'm doing this, like they, they saw the accident, they saw how much it affected me and they still continued to, to try to get me to drink. Like, Oh, come on. It's just this one time live a little motherfucker. It's not this one time. If I would drink every time somebody said it's just this one time, I'd be drinking every fucking weekend. It's not this one time, right? So you have to change your environment. This is why I I have the Captain's Lifestyle crew. It's my private online men's community. Obviously, it would be better to have a group like this in person, but uh, in today's day and age, that's difficult to find you know such like minded people in close proximity to you. So we meet every single week and hop on a uh, accountability call and and talk about these things that we're struggling with. And once you see other men who are going through similar struggles that you are, then that gives you an extra push. Because a lot of times, especially as men, we think we're dealing with a lot of these things on our own. Like we're the only ones who are, uh, you know, struggling with a, a pornography addiction. It's like, no, most men are struggling with that. Let's talk about it and hold each other accountable so we can actually make change. It does seem to be uniquely male. And you know, this probably doesn't sound all that great coming from two men talking, but like it's it the men in our, in my life, you know, my friends, coworkers, you know, whoever it's like, we, we all try and we keep our stuff to ourselves, and we all try and be like, you know, this hero, the hero of your own movie of your own life story. And I can, I can just, you know, bear it and do all the things that I, that I need to do and I can get through all of it. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe you can, but if we were more open and had that community and it's very difficult to open up to people that we know, it's almost easier to open up to people who are strangers because they have no or we have no preconceived notion of how they think about us. That's what I think is the more important part than like what they think about. Like you're, if you, if we all opened up to our actual friends and this is, I'm talking to the guys here, if you open up to your buddies, if they're actually your buddies, they will be supportive of you and like, you know, they'll help you. But we think that they won't and they think, oh, you're just a, you're being a little bitch. You're being a little pussy. You're, you're, you know, whatever. Sorry for the language, but you know that, but that's not going to happen if they're your real friends. But, online it's like people are not really going to say that to you and there will be more likely or you'll be more likely to open up and that's where like you know online communities like yours really play such a huge huge role Mm -hmm. i experienced that in the marine corps um 
this was back when I was, I wouldn't say that I was depressed. Definitely not at the time. I wouldn't have said that, but I fucking hated my life. That's for sure. I was super stressed out. I was having trouble sleeping. Um, and then one time I actually confessed this to uh, one of my buddies in the Marine Corps. And he essentially said, get over it. Like mm. we're all going through the same thing. And it's like, of course, I'm not going to fucking express myself and like tell anybody how I'm feeling mm. after that. Like the one time that I get up, get enough courage to like express this. It's like, so uh, a lot of men deal with that is because of situations like that. They keep everything to themselves. And I I was there for years, right? And it sucks um, because, you, and not that I even wanted to talk about these things. I just, I got so good at suppressing everything. For a long time, I, I really didn't have feelings. I learned to be uh, almost apathetic towards everything. I really didn't experience love until about two years ago, like actually. And that comes from, I imagine that came from me just suppressing all of my feelings and not feeling the need to, or want to share with anybody because I would be rejected, right? And so it makes such a huge difference when you have a group of men who you can essentially say anything to, right? I host in-person men's retreats and the breakthroughs that these guys have are just phenomenal. They're, they're beyond what I even expected because especially in person, like I said, it is the best way to do this. They allow themselves to get vulnerable mm -hmm. because once they're in proximity uh, for a few days and they understand that they're safe, they allow themselves to open up. And once they get vulnerable, which by the way, is the only way to actually change it's by getting vulnerable and admitting what's going on and getting help for it. That's the only way to change. Once they allow themselves to do that, it's like, it's like this blanket of like stress, anxiety, depression, darkness, whatever it is, is lifted off of them. And they're like, holy shit, there's this whole new world out there where people actually love me and actually care for me and actually want to see me thrive as opposed to constantly competing with me or trying to one up me or stabbing me in the back or whatever. Like there are good dudes out there. Right. So yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the benefits of, of my online community. And it, it's so rewarding from a coaching standpoint to get to see these transformations, right? Like, you know, it, it's, it's the coolest thing. Yeah, the the seeing other people transform and improve is is the best part of what we do, and I think it's the it's the real reason that keeps us doing what we do, and that leads me exactly into like the next thought that I had was about how important has you leading this community been to your own healing and transformation and personal development? It's been huge, right? the <laughs> The only way to get better at leading is to actually lead, right? Mm -hmm. You can read about it all you want. You can attend leadership seminars, but you actually got to practice it, right? So I get better every single day because I'm practicing these things. And I have to, well, I don't have to do anything, but in order for me to show up uh, the way that I want to and the way that uh, my clients and you know friends will benefit from me is by leading by example, right? That that and yeah, that goes along with integrity. The, the two, what I would say the two most important aspects of masculinity, and really it's the same thing is integrity and leading by example, doing what you say you're going to do, making and keeping promises and actually living that lifestyle. Like this is why I'm coming out with uh, my new YouTube show called living the captain's lifestyle. So people can see, Hey, all these things that, I preach and that I talk about and that I post about, it's not just like these one-off things. Like I actually live my life this way. Like the captain's code, for example, like that is actually how I live my life. And this is actually how you can start to um, incorporate these changes into your life, right? Like there's no, it's not a secret. Like I'm literally telling you what to do. You just got to do it. 
And this is a realization that I came to is I would always say something like, um, I'm trying to tell people, right? Like when somebody would, um, when somebody would, you know, send me a new article on how companies are spraying glyphosate on food and that's causing your gut to become leaky and, you know, a whole host of problems come from that. I would say, yeah, I'm trying to tell people. And then one day, admittedly, when I was high, I had a high idea. Shout out to Ryan Sprague for that terminology. I had a high idea and I was like, maybe, just maybe, me telling people is the problem. So I started to think about it. How could me telling people be the problem? And I was like, well, I don't like being told what to do. That's mm -hmm. for sure. I'm sure other people don't like being told what to do. So if we don't like being told what to do, how can I still get this message across? And I started to think, how do I make the decision to do something? Well, I am inspired to do it based on something I see or a story that I heard. And I was like, oh, boom, duh. Me telling people is the problem. So what I'm going to do instead is show people. I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to document everything, put it out there while still obviously you know talking about it. But they can see, oh, he actually lives this way, right? So lead, leading by example is, is, is everything. And so for me, being, you know, having so much, um, not so much media presence, but, you know, I post on social media multiple times a day. I've got a podcast. I've got the show. It's like you get, you're looking into my life. Like I actually live this way. So it's been, it's been great. It's, it's a way that I can hold myself accountable to a lot of these things. It's, it's talking the talk. There's a, there's so much, there's so much noise out there. Everyone's saying, do this, do that. And, and a lot of people, and I'm sure that you know, some of them in real life as well, people who post on social media about, oh, I do all this healthy stuff in my, you know, 19 step morning routine. And they don't actually do that. They just saw someone else do it and said, oh, this, this reel would get a lot of views. If I, if I posted this with like a cool music and like, look how cute my little, you know, pajama set, whatever, like, but they don't actually do that stuff. They don't actually do the stuff that they say. And on the other side of that, the people watching this, and, th and this goes back to what you were saying about um, just like mediocrity, is that I think there's a big problem with people convincing themselves that they are actually doing something because of the people who they follow. So they might follow you and say, Taylor's doing all this stuff and they get all like, jacked up and excited to watch you do your thing and like they're following along and they and they understand it but then they don't actually do it themselves but because they see you multiple times a day across multiple platforms they think that they're doing it and this is not like a you know this is just across the board i think this is with with with, with finances with fitness for sure people get in this trap of I follow all these people who are doing stuff, but then they, they forget that they didn't actually do that thing. Oh, I hit like on so-and-so's post that they crushed their workout today. But like, did you actually work out? Like you've got to, you got to go do that thing as well. But leading from the front, leading by example, I think is, is something that I've been coming around to a little bit more, um, in, in several ways as well, where people know the things that they have to do. Everyone knows don't eat junk food. Like yeah, eating McDonald's several times a week, that, that, that ain't it. But how do we actually go about doing that? How do we get that message across so that it sticks? It's it's by showing by example, leading by example, the same way we learn from, you know, our parents and teachers and stuff as kids. Like we don't really listen to the words, we just do what they do. And it's a little bit monkey see, monkey do, but it, it translates into uh, into the adult world as well. You mentioned something there that I kind of want to go through and, and it'll probably take us some time to get through, but it's your your captain's code concept that you live your life by. How did you come about defining those things? And, and if, you, if you'd like to, I'd like to go through each of them and, and, and sort of discuss each of them. So how, how did you come about like coming up with the captain's code? Yeah, good question. Uh, well, it's very on brand, you mm -hmm. see, right? With the uh, pirate code, right? So I've, I've known that I've wanted to create a, a sort of pirate code for a while. And it wasn't until reading... Uh, Be More Pirate by Sam Conniff Allende, I believe is how you pronounce his name, is when I really, like after I read that book, I created The Captain's Code. Because in there, he, he gives you essentially a step-by-step -step process on how to create your own 
pirate code uh, for yourself and for business. And first off, let's just bust some common misconceptions about pirates. A lot of people think that all they did was like rape and pillage and destroy things. Absolutely. There were some pirates like that, but one of the coolest things about pirates is that they weren't all those savages. They were, they put on the, they were masters of perception. So people had the perception that all pirates were these, you know, savages that are going to rape and pillage and plunder if they didn't surrender, right? So because of that, they were able to fly the Jolly Roger flag and that's, you know, that that created fear in in people even though they weren't all like that, right? Um so there's, there's, I, I don't remember the specific ones, but there's um, stories of pirates who like never even got into an altercation because it was just this, um, people feared them because of the, the stories that they told. So pirates were amazing storytellers and they would, they would not necessarily fabricate things, but just over dramatize mm-hmm. tales, right? Pirates tell tall tales. And so with that, they created a reputation of this. And they also revolutionized democracy, essentially. Pirates, onboard pirate ship was the first democracy. Everybody was equal. They didn't care if you were black, white, straight, gay, man, woman. doesn't matter. You're part of the ship. You're part of the crew. Uh, They also uh, came up with, um, like, fair pay and like health assurance essentially because if you lost a leg um no matter if you were the lowest person on the ship or the first mate like you all you get paid this sum of money same thing if you lose an eye whatever so they were all about equality again part of the ship part of the crew and they lived by this code that basically held them together as a crew because everybody followed the code. And so they knew that nobody was going to go behind one another's back for personal gain, because if they did, then that's when shit got real. It's like, you're actually fucking kicked off the ship or stranded on an Island or killed, you know? Um, so there was absolutely some aspect of that. So yeah, after reading that book, I created the captain's code and I just started to think what are the most important articles that I personally live by and that I teach? Like what are the the 12 most important things for health? And it came out to 12 just because captain's code, it, it's an acronym. So each letter stands for something. And the, the acronym is, so cold exposure is the first C and affirmations play with life, train your mind and your body, accept the uncontrollable, inspire others, nasal breathing, sun exposure, connect with loved ones and with mother nature, observe your thoughts, language, and actions, delegate tasks to other people, and eat real food. And we can go into those briefly, but we could that's like multiple different podcasts that, that we could yeah. record on this. <laughs> yeah. so those are the 12 most important things to start to become the captain of your own life. Like really, if you are looking to optimize your health, productivity, if you're looking to become fulfilled in your life, start with the captain's code. It covers everything. I mean, I've thought about this a lot. And of course, there's other important things, but really the basics are covered in the code. I love the whole pirate persona and like I'm into the you know history and not not necessarily pirates but just in general and I think another thing that's probably unfair about that is pirates were also at that time like in the Caribbean they were going against tyranny and against the crown the the Spanish and the English and so you know history is written by the victor so if the quote-unquote educated people who were making the rules and the governments are writing the books and telling the tales then they're going to say, yeah, the pirates who were stealing from us and taking business and all this stuff, then they were the bad guys. They were just horrible humans. And, and like, so I'm sure there were some of them who were horrible and maybe, you know, more than more often than not. And they did bad things to get what they 
what they got some of them but not all of them and it may not have all it some of it may be justified if we think about it in today's terms like well what were they fighting against like oh my god they were treated so poorly of course they had no choice but to do x and there's obviously limits to that and that's a whole other societal conversation <laughs> but i do think it is a it is a cool kind of like uh kind of persona and it's almost coming back now in a way like we go back to the nfts like the entire cryptocurrency everything is is not all that dissimilar it's fighting back against the system of financial control and like is that piracy it's not stealing but is that the same concept and i don't know that it's that far away yeah so i consider myself a modern day pirate because like you mentioned pirates traditionally back in the day they were fighting against tyranny they were typically either um you know merchant sailors or um, they they got out of the Navy and they were so horrified with the conditions that they had to tolerate. And so they created a democracy based on legitimate, fair rules. And so I'll, I'll read you uh, the first page of the Captain's Code that mm -hmm. summarizes a lot of this nicely. So it reads, as captains, we are modern day pirates. What does this mean? We are fighting to restore balance and make thriving standard through steering the wheel of lifestyle optimization. We are rebelling against the made up laws of society, standing up to the status quo and rejecting mediocrity. We have rewritten the rules to live a happy, healthy and productive life as a man using the captain's code. With the help of our crew, we are redistributing power and retelling the story of what it means to thrive as men so again we're rebelling against essentially these made-up laws which we can go into sovereignty a little bit um and then so we're rebelling against our government essentially and corporations that are you know telling us what to do and keeping us in this little box uh, keeping us slaves essentially we are rejecting mediocrity right because what's average now what's what's the average man now they're soft pale and weak they're depressed they're anxious they're stressed out they don't like their lives this is average yeah. right that's average so because of that we myself and the crew we wrote this together we have rewritten the rules to live a happy healthy productive life as a man with the captain's code by doing so we are redistributing power from the top one percent the people who are making these you know made up laws and keeping us trapped in this box to retell the story of what it means to thrive. Yeah, that's it's incredible. And more of this needs to happen because we need to be able to realize that you again, not to like, you know, make the pun, but like you actually are the captain of your own life and you can make those decisions and get yourself out of that situation that you think is not ideal, whether that be financial, uh, physical with your fitness, with your health, with your relationships or all of the above and all of the things you can actually make a change with all those things. You know, people like to complain about the West and all of the stuff. And it's like, okay, probably a lot of it is valid. But you also have the ability like, to do so many things here freely where you can actually change those decisions and no one's really going to stop you. Maybe if you do something that's like totally legal, sure. Or you're like, you know, barking up the wrong tree, maybe you'll face some resistance. But aside from that, you're pretty well in control. And when we look around and see others, and especially it's this attitude, I think of, it's like the participation trophy attitude and you're okay. And thanks for being here. Good job showing up. And you're, you're good just the way you are. And you don't need to like do too much. And it's like that has that. I think I'm 28. I'm not, not sure how you are, but we kind of grew up with that. And like, you know, luckily I think I've, I didn't have so much of that in, in my life and for my family and stuff, but just, you know, our, our age group has had that a lot and you see it so much people just settled so hard i see you know there's many people i know in my life who are around my age and it's like what they're doing right now in their mid-20s there's no sign of them changing what that's going to be and it's like they're just going to be the exact same person they are now until they're for the rest of their life and people think that this doesn't transfer over to fitness and people wonder why they wake up one day when they're 50 and it's just normal to be in pain. It's normal to be like overweight and you just, you know, you get out of shape as you get older. It's like, well, 
this stuff starts now to all like everyone, you know, young who's listening, like it starts now. You don't just wake up one day and when you're 50 and you're out of shape. It starts because when you were 23, you stopped giving a shit about yourself and then, you know, you gain, you know, a couple pounds a year for the next 20 years and you wake up one day and you realize it. But we need to understand that we can actually take control of this and like it, it, it starts now. The, the best time to start was yesterday. The second best time to start was, was right now, not to be super cliche, but understanding that you can actually make that, take this into under your control is a, is a hugely, hugely important thing. So, you know, all the stuff that you're doing in this captain's code, like it's very important. And obviously you know that, yeah. but just to highlight it. <laughs> yeah. Becoming the captain of your own life is essentially no longer allowing yourself to be a victim. Mm. And, and the victim mentality is defined as follows. The victim mentality is an acquired personality trait in which a person tends to regard themselves as the victim of the negative actions of others, even in the absence of clear evidence. The victim mentality depends on a habitual thought process and attributions. So if we break that down a little bit, the victim mentality is an acquired personality trait. So you acquired it. That means that you can unacquire it. You can let go of the victim mentality. It's a tendency that depends on habitual thought processes and attributions. So it's a tendency that depends on your habits. Your habits that you do on a daily basis are um, um, they're reaffirming, reaffirming your victim mentality. So this shows up as blaming other people or external circumstances for your problems. So you get stuck in traffic and you blame the traffic that you were late for work. When in reality, you could have left earlier, you could have taken a different route, whatever. Essentially, being the captain of your own life is taking extreme ownership for literally everything that goes wrong in your life. Not necessarily everything that goes right, because as a leader, one of the most important qualities as a leader is to give credit to others. So we take blame, we give credit, just hard for a lot of people, myself included. Of course, we all like recognition, right? And of course, we don't want the blame for everything, but we got to reverse that. We got to take the blame, take ownership for everything in our lives and give credit to other people for helping us along the way. Because again, no man is an island. We can't do this on our own, right? We, that's why you know we work together as a crew to collaborate, hold each other accountable, challenge each other, and move forward. That that can only happen when you're the captain of your own life. You steer your own ship where you want to go. Doesn't matter what anybody else says or does. When you know who you are and you know where you're going, that's being the captain of your own life. The way that I think about the ownership stuff is that you know you kind of have two options if something happens to you you can say it was my fault and therefore if it was my fault that this thing happened to me negative a negative thing happened to me then i can do something about it because it was my fault so i can do something to correct it for the next time or for the future or option number two is you can say oh it's so and so's fault and it's everyone else's fault and i can't do anything about it and then the result of that is, well, well, then you're fucked. Like, what are you going to do? You're just going to, this thing is just going to continue to happen to you no matter what, because you have no control over it. And so there's definitely stuff that happens in life where you don't have any control over, but you know, that there's less, far less of that than we think there is there than that we goes, convince ourselves there are. Yeah. That goes to the A in the yeah. captain's code, accept the uncontrollable, right? Exactly. So yeah, there's things we, we can't control, accept them. And what you can control, the one thing that you can control 100% of the time is your response. Mm -hmm. This is from Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. The one thing that can never be taken from a man is his ability to respond to whatever situation. When you become a victim, that's taken away from you, right? You, you're like, exactly. oh, what was me? You know, I'm... I'm I'm a victim to whatever circumstances is, is happening, right? Which, as you mentioned, is a horrible way to live. And I've been there. It sucks. This is why I'm, I'm 
teaching people and showing people how to move away from that because it's exhausting and it's stressful. Throughout the captain's code, there are many things which are not necessarily revolutionary, as you mentioned, right? These are not like, oh my God, I invented this crazy new thing that no one's ever heard of. It's just an amalgamation of all of these good things that make sense in, in order. I think maybe the most difficult one, and, and maybe correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here in your experience, is, is the O from the code. Observe your language, thoughts, and actions. How do you go about coaching people or leading people to actually step back, be like a third-party observer of their own life, and observe the things that is going on? Because it's super important but not really that easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As for it being the most difficult, that's, it's going to depend per person, right? It's all individual. Uh, For a lot of people, this is difficult because they've been programmed to just believe their thoughts for their entire life. They Mm -hmm. just believe because they have the thought, Oh, it must be true. I think I'm a loser. Okay. I'm a fucking loser then. And then they don't take any action, right? So they see other people doing something that they want to do, but they just, they plant the idea in their head that this person is gifted or they were just born that way, right? And so this is the story that they're telling themselves and they just believe that. And so they don't even try, they, they give up, right? So in order to start observing your language, ask yourself, is that true? You know, if you have a thought, ask yourself, is that true? Is that accurate? And then you can also picture yourself, like you mentioned, observing your thoughts from a third, third person's perspective, as if literally you're watching your thoughts and that becomes easier the more that you do it, right? If you're just starting out with this, you're going to be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Right. Um, but it, it comes with practice. So really one of the best ways to get better at this is staying present because most people I know from experience personally and talking with people do not live in the present moment. They're either reminiscing on the past, thinking of what could have been, what should have been, or they're thinking about the future. What could Mm -hmm. potentially go wrong, right? That's depression and anxiety. Depression is looking back and saying, oh man, that sucks. I wish I could go back and change this thing or whatever. Well, you can't, you're not going that way. So there's no point looking back there. Right. And so depression is living in the past. Anxiety is looking in the future and saying, oh, well, what if I fail? What if I can't do it? What if I get embarrassed? What if this thing goes wrong? Oh shit. I still have this email to send and like, Anxieties living in the future, thinking about all the potential things that could go wrong in the future. Anxiety and depression cannot exist in the present moment, right? Yeah, that's a very interesting so, way of putting it, but I, but I 100% agree with what you're saying. Yeah, when you're present, then you're able to better observe your thoughts. Because, again, if you're in the, the past or the, the future you're stressed out. And when you're in an upregulated state, not nothing good comes from being in an upregulated state when, when you're trying to create no form of creation can come from a state of survival because when you're in that upregulated state from an evolutionary evolutionarily (laughs) from an evolutionary standpoint, you are running from a tiger or, uh, you know, on the hunt for your next meal in those times you're not thinking about creating something new you're not thinking about creating a new better life for yourself right so when you can be in the present then you can breathe (sighs) what's what's the matter with with this moment what's going wrong in this very moment nothing the answer is nothing or what's going right in this moment Exactly. That's, that's what I was getting at. So most people, what if the bad stuff, they, uh, again, what if I fail? What if I can't do it? What if she dumps me? What if everybody makes fun of me? Almost nobody. What ifs the good stuff? Hmm. What if 
I can do that thing? What if I can do five more reps? What if I was able to surrender to this feeling of the ice instead of trying to escape it? What if I can enjoy this moment, right? So once you start to what if the good stuff, and again, this comes from observing your thoughts, language, and actions from a third party view, right? So I would say those are my two, my two best strategies for starting to observe is, is asking yourself, is this thought accurate? And understanding that you don't have to just blindly believe your thoughts and then living in the present moment. I love how these things also intertwine and kind of come full circle where I would imagine that one of the, or not that I would imagine, one of the biggest things that I love about cold exposure and going into an ice bath is the fact that it forces you into the present. It is so difficult and it doesn't get, it gets, you know, you get more used to the suck that is going to come, but it doesn't really get easier. It is cold as hell every single time you go into that ice bath, but it forces you to be there now. Otherwise, you're just going to be freaking out. You start hyperventilating like crazy and you're just, the alarm bells are eventually going to overcome your hardness to stay in the tub and you're going to get out. But it forces you to stay present to be able to get through it. And the same thing is true, I believe, with training, with working out. When you're in a hard workout, like if you're doing a hard deadlift, a heavy deadlift or a squat or a bench press or something, you can't really be somewhere else. Otherwise, you are going to miss the lift. You're going to drop the bar. You're going to hurt yourself. You're, it's just not going to be all that successful. You have to be there now. And so these roundabout ways of forcing us to live in the present moment is a way to train and put in reps of that thing so that when you're not in the ice bath, when you're not in the gym, you're just sitting at your desk doing your thing, laying in bed at night, you can get back to that place. And this is why I love like the interconnectedness of the captain's code and how fitness really just ex- like extrapolates to every other aspect of our life. It's not maybe directly related. Maybe you don't care about having a big bench press, but you care about being present for your children. And so having a bench press and training in the gym might actually translate through that roundabout way. And so the more we can think about all of these things or training all of the other things, I think that that's how we start to understand and start to utilize all of it rather than just picking and choosing the things that seem easiest to us, right? Someone might read the captain's code and be like, okay, I can do, um, I can do nasal breathing and I can do sun exposure, but I'm not willing to eat real food. And it's like, well, then you're missing the point, right? Yeah. Everything is connected. This is why my brain is called the captain's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because when I was a CrossFit coach for five years, people would come up to me and say, Hey, I've been coming into the gym for a year. Why am I not seeing improvements? It's like, well, you're consistent in the gym, but how's your sleep? How are your stress levels? What is your diet like? Their answers would always be the same. It's I'm lucky if I get six, maybe seven hours, they're either stressed out with their relationships or their work and their diet is pretty good. Right? Anybody <laughs> who says their diet is pretty good is pretty full of shit. Right? So I told them, it's like, okay, well you can't come into the gym and expect that one hour to offset the other 23 hours of a bad lifestyle. It doesn't work like that. It's everything comes together. It's the holistic health, right? So that's why my logo, the wheel of lifestyle optimization talks about balance and steering properly each spoke of the wheel to properly balance everything in your lifestyle. And then you reach the center of the logo, which is a yin yang, AKA optimal balance, masculine, feminine, um, nature versus technology, work, play, all those sort of things. Mm -hmm. That only comes through balancing all eight spokes of the wheel properly, right? So yeah, to your con- point on to your point on the ice bath, this goes with any sort of uncomfortable or undesirable situation in your life. Same thing with workouts when you feel your legs start to burn, or maybe you're in an uh, uncomfortable situation or, or conversation with your partner. Maybe you're uh, in a meeting that you don't want to be in, you're stuck in traffic, whatever. Anytime that you try to escape your current situation and wish that it was different in some way, the more uncomfortable you will be. Whereas when you incorporate the A of the captain's code, accept the uncontrollable and surrender 
to the current circumstance, the more not necessarily comfortable, but the more at peace you will be. So in the ice, this is why I love the ice baths and, and cold showers too. So don't give yourself a fucking excuse if you don't have an ice bath. Take a cold shower. Similar thing. So in the cold, again, the more that you try to escape it, the more that it's going to suck. The more that you wish you were in the sauna or the more that you wish you uh, could just reach over and turn the, the shower hot or the more that you wish you were in your cozy bed, the more that that's going to make you wish that you were elsewhere, right? Versus when you can ask yourself, what if I could surrender to this moment? What if I enjoyed this feeling? What if I could get curious about this feeling? Where is the sensation of cold coming from? Is it actually bad? Because nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. One of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare. So cold is simply a feeling. Just like the burning of your legs after a set of squats is simply a feeling. You get to decide how you label that feeling. You get to decide whether that's a good or bad feeling. Right? So if you can accept it and surrender to that feeling and smile during it, this is a fantastic hack. Smiling during a workout, during an ice bath, during um, you know a, a work um, project that you don't want to be doing. If you can train your brain to smile during challenges, it's a game changer. Right? So surrender to the situation, accept what you cannot control, smile. And then all of a sudden, all the things that sucked and that you wanted to avoid, you can learn to enjoy. And that's another way to overcome resistance and get better. It's also, I think, a, a good training of the panic response. If you can embrace the suck in the ice bath and in working out in the gym and all these other things, when something actually bad happens that you can't control, you will have somewhere physiologically to pull from to control yourself from that panic response instead of just go from zero to 100 you know alert five whatever you can you can actually just be calm you can take a deep breath assess the situation and like see what's going on but if you've never been through like any type of hardship in your life and like let's be real a lot of people haven't been through any difficulty and that is a like incredible thing for society that we don't have you know widespread famine and all this stuff that's a very good thing but what but you know, a, a bad day is coming. Something bad is going to happen. And everyone's worst day ever is relative for them. They're, you know, 10 out of 10 worst pain, worst day ever is relative to them. So when that day happens, if you have no experience to pull from, and not that an ice bath is like as bad as your worst day ever, but it's something, it's something to pull from so that you can assess the situation and calmly react appropriately and effectively to whatever actual bad stuff is happening in your life. And I think that that has become more highlighted over the past couple of years with all of the uh, with all the covid stuff and just like the the rapid change in in society and economy over the past couple of years in North America anyways um and so it's just becoming more and more important to get this exact message out there it's important to become resilient yes this is this is what we're talking about with the cold exposure with workouts with intermittent fasting uh, all these things are building resilience so that when you face a real life stressor, not that these aren't real life stressors, but when you face an uncontrollable stressor, whether that's a natural disaster, whether that's somebody breaks into your home and you have to defend yourself, you better hope you fucking have been training for that, right? <laughs> yeah. And you're situationally aware and you're not just a victim, you know? Um, yeah, b building resilience to these things it that's that's my that's the thing that i promote most when talking about cold exposure yes there's a whole host of physiological benefits like it boosts dopamine up to 250 percent and it increases brown adipose tissue so you're able, better able to insulate yourself and it's more metabolically active so it um, burns fat and improves recovery all these things but i say it builds your mental fortitude because when you can start your day with something that the majority of the Western world is deathly afraid of and will avoid at all costs, AKA waking up and getting into a cold shower, when you start your day with that, the amount of power 
and self-confidence that comes from that, knowing that you willingly put yourself through an uncomfortable and challenging situation, the rest of your day will be better. I guarantee it. That's why the action step in uh, the, the first C, the cold exposure of the captain's code, is as soon as you wake up, get up, get into the cold shower. Don't check your phone, which is what most people do. And I've, I've been there, right? This all comes from experience. I used to scroll for hours sometimes, right? Instead of waking up, checking your phone or hitting snooze, get up, get in the cold shower, and then make your next decision. Your first decision is already made for you. Get up, take a cold shower. That's it. Everything after that will go well. And I talk about the the cages morning ritual. It's cold exposure, affirmations, growth, exercise, and sunlight. So it fits in with the captain's code. Um, The cold exposure, we covered that. Affirmations, uh, we covered this a little bit. It goes in with observing your language too. Like, what's that inner voice telling you? Is it telling you that you're a loser, that you can't do this, that this sucks? Or is it telling you that you're strong, you're capable, you get what you deserve, you're a hard worker, whatever your affirmations are, right? So repeat those to yourself first thing in the morning to reprogram your mind. Because you've spent the past however many years programming this negative self-talk in your head. It's going to take some time to reprogram these affirmations, which is one of the A's in the captain's code. Then the G is growth. So again, instead of checking your phone for sing in the morning, um, which just destroys dopamine and it raises cortisol like crazy, one of the best times to, to learn something new and to reprogram your mind is first thing in the morning when you're in this alpha brainwave state. So read a book, listen to an educational podcast, do uh, a course, something that improves your brain, body, whatever, 1% that day, right? Get it out of the way first thing in the morning because this is one of the things that most people neglect, right? They say they don't have time for reading. It's like, yeah, you do. Prioritize it. Then exercise, uh, not necessarily a hard workout, but move your body when you wake up, right? Because you've been in one position for hopefully eight hours. When you wake up, you're going to be a little stiff. You want to get the blood and the lymph flowing not only because it helps with body composition, right? You're, you're moving your body, um, but it also helps set your circadian rhythm because movement elevates your core body temperature. Raising your core body temperature um, is one of the factors that sets your body's internal clock. And then most importantly, watch the sunrise. So this is, if you're going to do one thing, it's watch the sunrise because it just plays a role in everything light is literally the reason why we are Mm -hmm. alive right it's like light and oxygen without those two things we can't exist right so get outside watch the sunrise this is going to shut off your body's melatonin production so it wakes you up in the morning and then it resets it for 14 to 16 hours later so it wakes you up in the morning and helps you sleep better that night it's also going to raise dopamine and serotonin levels naturally So instead of being addicted to your phone, getting dopamine and cortisol from that, you can go out into the sun and get addicted to watching the sunrise. And then you actually feel good, happy, and productive to start your day. So that's my cages morning ritual. Definitely a good one. Definitely easier said than done, like all things. But if we only did what was easy, then we wouldn't really have anything good, would we? So that's not not really a good way to, to go about things. I like to say the opposite. I learned this from uh, one of my coaches and mentors because I literally always am a part of some program or mentorship or have a coach because I understand the importance, again, of investing in myself. So one of my coaches told me that most things in life are easier done than said because most people are going through life saying things like, oh, easier said than done. Right. And that's just a fucking excuse to not do. Mm -hmm. Right. So I like to say it's easier done than said, because when you actually fucking do the thing, then you can stop bitching and complaining about all your problems that you're having. And you realize it wasn't really that hard. Exactly. Like just do it. Right. Just start somewhere. Right. The longer you put it off. Oh, easier said than done. No, it's not. Do the thing. Right. 
So Agreed. the quicker you can actually do the thing, the less you'll be complaining about, you know, whatever problem it is that you're having. So just do it. Yeah. Yeah. And even if it is difficult, it's like nobody said it would be easy and point. easy things are not good. Exactly. It, the point of it is that it's difficult, but the point of it is that it's difficult and it will help you. So if you want to help yourself, do it. And it's not, there's not really a better, <laughs> a better way to go about saying it than that. I don't think. This is why so few people live a life that they actually enjoy. Yeah. Most people are, are just surviving. Yeah. Right. They wake up and it's the same routine every day. Wake up, hit snooze, wake up again, check your phone, make sure that you still have all the same problems, check your email, make sure you're still stressed out about all the same things. Then you get up and go to a job that you don't like. You complain to your coworkers about your boss. Then you drive home in traffic. Then you get home and your wife or your girlfriend has some problem that she wants you to take care of and you're stressed out about that. And then you get into an argument and the sex is bad because <laughs> you're overweight and you're unhealthy and you have no stamina and you have trouble getting an erection. And then you try to go to bed, but you're so stressed out that you have trouble sleeping and you toss and you turn and you wake up and you do it all over. That something close to that is what the majority of men are experiencing today. I, I talk to a lot of guys. Most men do not like their lives. They pretend they do. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. How are you? No, you're not. That's just your fucking reaction. You're not good. Why are you lying to yourself? Right? So It's, it's sad to hear and it's, it's hard to hear. And it's harder to hear it if you hear that and you see yourself in that. And so I think the solution to that is don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. There are things available. There are ways to get out of that trap, out of that vicious cycle and just do it. Find the things, live the captain's lifestyle, whatever the thing is that's going to get you to do that, get yourself out of that cycle because that is average and that's not good, but that is average. And I don't think anybody would say that they want that. Another thing that I want to mention and this gets brought up a lot is where do I start, right? There's so many things. What do I do? One, download the captain's code. I made it as simple as possible. Now you don't have to do literally all of those things at once, right? Just, but pick one, pick one thing from the captain's code, the thing that you imagine would bring you the most amount of benefit. Do that thing consistently, right? Do, do that. Start there. And then you can start to add these habits on top, right? Yep. You start something, start where you are and start stacking wins from there. Yep. Something is always better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't let don't let um, indecision hold you back from taking action. Pick one thing on the captain's code, ideally more. But if you're really in that place of you know you've been doing nothing your life and you're really in that dark place, pick one thing. Pick one thing. Do it for a week, then add another thing to it. Start there. I love it, man. I love it. Where can people find the captain's code and find you and your podcast and like all that contact info stuff? I will put in the show notes, but where can people, you know, find that to, to plug into all of this stuff? Yeah, my website, thecaptainslifestyle.com or any of my social medias. It's it's linked in my bio um, at captain underscore Taylor underscore Morgan is my Instagram, my TikTok, my YouTube, uh, the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. So any resource that you would want, you'll be able to find there. Amazing. And the Captain's Code is a free download for everybody listening. That's not Correct. something that, that you need to pay for. So don't be like, oh my God, Taylor, this sales pitch. Like, No, that's a free download for you to listen and start implementing all those things so you don't really have a good excuse for that. It's literally free and it's... It's, it's the, it's so simple that it hurts. I can see it in your face. Yeah, like it, <laughs> it, it's like, it, it's free one. And you know, we could go back and talk about free. I, I think because things are free, people don't see the value in it. Yeah. There's a right? whole so like, hours of discussion. Yeah, there. Think, yeah. If you go to a, a $10,000 seminar, you know, you're going to be taking notes versus if you attend the same seminar, with the same information, but it's free. You're like, oh, that was a cool seminar. 
Yeah. Right? But the $10,000 one, you're going to make sure that you take notes, you take action, you get your value from it. Right. right. So don't think that because the captain's code is free, that there's no value. Like I literally spent months creating this, the most important things, um, to live a healthy and fulfilling life. Amazing, man. And you know, getting all the best information out there freely available, I think is probably one of the most important things. And there's, you know, there's money comes from adding value to the world. And so it doesn't have to come from every single transaction, but you're adding plenty of value to the world and the money comes back in other roundabout ways. So there's a lot there, a lot to unpack with, with that one. But, uh, you know, to everyone listening, go download the captain's code and at least pick one and start using it. Taylor, what message do you have for the people? Any last message that you want to leave everybody with uh, before we close off today? Hmm. Yeah, let's be honest with yourself. Stop, stop pretending that you're living a, a, a life that you actually want to live. And I, I mean this, like if you don't wake up on most days and if you're not so excited to go throughout your day and live your life and make a positive impact. If that's missing for you, if you dread waking up and you're just kind of surviving on autopilot, being a zombie throughout your day, start being honest with yourself. Ask yourself these questions. Is this it? Is this my life? And then picture yourself on your deathbed. So picture this whatever 95 year old version of yourself looking back at you now would you regret the decisions that you're making would you regret not taking action i want you to actually ask yourself that question and think about it and then whatever the answer is take action on that very well said go back and hit that like 10 second 30 second rewind button listen to that again Listen to that last piece. Listen to that as many times as you need to to start making the changes in your life. Taylor, thank you so much for being here, man. I, I greatly appreciate you. All of your contact info, links to the Captain's Code, everything will be in the show notes of this episode for everyone to to follow and download and start living by. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you're following Taylor everywhere um, and doing the things more importantly than that. Give this podcast a rating and review on all the platforms. Share it with the people in your life who need to hear it. I know that we spoke mostly about men, but ladies, share this with the men in your life who need to hear it um, and take action. That's the name of the game. Daniel Yoris everywhere as well. Go outside, be a good person, take your shoes off, and be honest with yourself. Take it easy. <laughs>